thought you might like to start by exercising your feminine charms on a bit of matrimonial. We have a peculiar chap who wants legal aid, but will have his application turned down because he doesn't know what he's after. And if he did, he'd have no case. I wonder if I might... He's waiting. I... Let me know if you can't manage anything. She's a mother, you see. But you looked after them? Well, we shared it at first, but uh, the band was crap without a light, but without me, you know, it got along. Did you say you managed the band? A bit, yeah, but mostly I managed the kids. When the band was signed, they got a proper manager, and then she got a bloke and a guard and all that stuff. Right. With this, we're looking to improve your access to the girls. Is that right, Mr. Martin? Yeah, I just want them to come and stay sometimes. You see, I take them to the zoo in the rain, and she takes them to Rio de Rossets, and no contest, really. I've only got a poxy little flat. Yeah, I see. Well, look, uh, sign here, and we'll send this off. I wondered why you waited three years after the divorce to decide you were unhappy with the terms agreed. And although I know you have trouble with your ex-wife giving you access, really that would be better settled out of court in good faith. There is no good faith. I have them one weekend in free and one week's holiday. And when I do go around there to collect them, she's hardly ever there or she says they're ill. I know. Do you? Do you really? And she split up the family. I gave her the kids because she's their mother and a child needs its mother. I'm their flesh and blood too. It's like they're becoming strangers. I'm sorry. It was a lousy settlement. Did you say that to your boss? What? Simpson. Stimson. Yeah, yeah, Stimson. He dealt with it at the time of the divorce. I was on legal aid then and he was well choked because he wasn't making no money on it. Still, he did all the stuff. Stimson handled the original divorce settlement? Well, yeah. Thanks. Bank statements, rent book, list of assets. You see, if we're going for maintenance, the courts will need to know every detail of your finance and of Haley. Mr. Martin, I'm sorry, I know this must be very boring for you, but... Oh, no, 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 it's not that hard. Um, I didn't know it would take so long, and I arranged to pick the girls up at four, and it takes me over an hour to get there. Oh. I could go with you, or we can talk in the car. Really? Yeah, really. So we're never late. Yeah. Come on, Cass. There's a sleepover at my best friend's house. Well, I'll bring you back in time. But I want to get ready. Well, I'll bring you back early. Dad? What? What are you saying? She's saying if you would listen, if she doesn't need you butting in and out whenever it pleases you. Who's your friend? You must be desperate. He is. I'm his solicitor. Stop any of that shit and I'll blow you out completely. You won't see them again. Hold it. Is this the truth? It's true. So what's the angle? Well, we'll go for maintenance. <laughs> Is this a wind-up? I'm afraid I can't talk to you without your solicitor present. Uh, come on, let's go and yeah? Hello there. Hiya. You certainly rolled out the big guns. That's Don Brown. Oh, shit. You wouldn't care to join us, would you? A bit busy, I'd love to. You'll be fine. Anything in the standard? Not in the early editions. Sorry. It's all right. Thank you for coming out to see us. Second talking, anyway. Good. Keep smiling. The more confident you look, the more nervous they'll get. Mm. I think that's a bit much. Yeah. Good luck. This is Dawson. Like I said before, really. 
Certainly, Your Honour. My client, Mr. Joseph Martin. There's no need to stand, Mrs. Dawson. No, Your Honour. My client, Mr. Joseph Martin. And if I may remind Your Honour of the Hanson Dow case we were both involved in before Christmas. It was clearly shown that with considerably better, though nonetheless sentimental and invalid grounds, Mr. Dow had no case within the law. Yes, that case had come to mind, Mr. Brown. I suggest, therefore, that however plausibly the charming lady presents the meagre material at her disposal, what we have before us is an opportunist and impertinent attempt to intrude into the private affairs of a woman who has been divorced for three years and has since since, I repeat, had considerable success. I dealt very fully with the failure of the solicitor at the time to properly represent Mr. Martin's interests and with Mr. Martin's conspicuous contribution to his ex-wife's later success. Not at all. I believe that's for his honor to decide. There is one other point. If Mr. Martin and I were to change places, this case would be seen in a very different light. Absolutely. If you don't mind, were I a man, I would not be treated with the condescension of the gentleman opposite. Such patronizing terms as this charming lady have no place in an environment where men and women are supposed to be treated. And similarly, were Mr. Martin a woman, a rejected wife living in, in relative poverty without the custody or company of her children, we'd all be rightly scandalized if she didn't have, at the very least, frequent contact to say nothing of proper financial support from her wealthy husband. But he is not a woman. I fail to see how. Yes, sadly, I'm sure you do. Furthermore, in a country where 60% of all fathers, for many reasons, never see their children again after divorce, the struggles of a man who patently loves his children, I remind you of his continued involvement in their schooling, and who patently wishes to have more than just a passing involvement in their lives, should receive our fullest support, especially when their, how shall I put it, common law stepfather, an American gentleman in the rock music business, has this in mind for them, and I quote, I love them as my own, and being an American, I hope they grow up with access to both cultures. He then goes on to say, there are good schools in the US, and better opportunities than in the UK. So sure, why not? It's as hot in California as it's wet in England. Some plans he's making for another man's children. Recess. Who called it? They did. Well done. Well, there's a little way to go yet. What's the matter? I don't think it would be right to take the children away from her. Nor do I. Yeah, but isn't that the way it's heading? That's the way they think. It's a lever. Now we do. Mrs. Dawson. Yes. Excuse me. I think we should sort a few things out. I think you should too. Yes, very good. We will fight the care and control to the bitter end. I'm sure. If you were prepared to drop that, you could make a very favorable settlement on the financial side. And access? And access. What exactly are you gentlemen offering? Christmas and five weeks further holiday. I don't believe it. And two hundred thousand pounds full and final settlement. <sighs> okay? Yeah. That was masterful, Mrs. Dawson. Charlotte. Charlotte. 
What I particularly admired was the way you quoted that newspaper article verbatim, without even reading it. What a talent. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>